TV Crazy Man here. In this video, we take a look at the Incredible Hulk's determined antagonist, Jack McGee. Investigative reporter. Mr. McGee, don't make me angry. What was his motivation? Did he really want to help the Hulk? Or the man who becomes the creature? Or was it all just about McGee's career? Should Banner have trusted him? I can't trust you! Of course you can! We follow McGee's highlights from the pilot episode and unto the end. Don't miss a second because... You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Jack McGee was first seen on the pilot episode of The Incredible Hulk. McGee works for the newspaper The National Register and is played by the actor Jack Colvin. McGee's character was obsessed with capturing the Hulk and proving his existence to the world at large. McGee was written into the show to fulfill a similar function as uh, Philip Gerard in the classic TV show The Fugitive, where the main character, Richard Kimball, is always on the run, much like Bill Bixby's David Banner in The Hulk. The fugitive, reprieved by fate when a train wreck freed him en route to the death house, freed him to hide in lonely desperation. Mr. McGee appears in the first episode and right away starts harassing David Banner about his research. After all, isn't everyone interested in tapping into the hidden strength that all humans have? And I wish not to be interviewed. All right, Dr. Banner. But I don't give up easily. In the pilot, Banner and Dr. Elena Marks are thought to have died in a massive fire and lab explosion. Ironically, it's Mr. McGee who causes the fire by spilling over chemicals while hiding in a storage closet. McGee is unaware of this and blames the death of Banner and Elena on the Hulk's actions. This is the episode where Banner utters the famous line, Mr. McGee, don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Mr. McGee, don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Shortly thereafter, the explosion occurs. <laughs> When you stop to think about it, if Mr. McGee had not been searching for the origin of the creature, Elena would still be alive, and together her and Banner may have found a cure relatively quickly for David, thus ending David's future trials and fruitless search for a cure. McGee was creating the story he was pursuing. Almost every town Banner appears is the hope McGee is soon to follow. McGee convinces his paper to offer reward for any information that may lead to the capture of the Hulk. And he remains unaware that Banner is the creature and is very much alive. In a season two, two-part episode, Mystery Man, McGee crash lands a plane with Banner into the wilderness, and they both get trapped in a forest fire. McGee doesn't realize it's Banner, thanks to bandages that cover Banner's face from a previous accident. In this two-part episode, McGee does finally see that a man becomes the Hulk, a man he only knows as John Doe. In this episode, we get a little glimpse into why McGee is so obsessed over the Hulk. When Banner asks him, why do you want the Hulk so badly? And McGee responds, because the Hulk means escape. Get it? It's the biggest story of the 20th century. Then he says, I could get my column back, write real stories, important stories. I could be somebody. And what happens to the Hulk? My paper bleed it dry. It's during this conversation that Banner realizes that Mr. McGee will not ever stop and he has a choice he can help mr gee get out of the fire knowing he'll always hound him and he'll never stop or let mr mcgee fend for himself which almost seems like what mr mcgee would do if the situation was reversed but the hulk saved your life you told me so yourself don't you think you should help it yes but you gotta choose so there you have it mr mcgee is a man obsessed with success to the point where he is borderline evil. You or the other guy? The only question that would be left is how far would Mr. McGee go to get the Hulk? And it seems like no matter how many times the Hulk saved Mr. McGee's life, Mr. McGee would still not give up the hunt. In the third season, McGee's pursuit of Banner really heats up. In the episode Homecoming, McGee even questions Banner's sister. Ironically, McGee gets to have Thanksgiving dinner with Banner's father and sister, even as Banner escapes from McGee out through the yard. It's very nice. It's sad, you know, when you think about the people who don't have Thanksgiving. You have to wonder how much Banner's life would have been improved if it wasn't for the constant hounding of Jack McGee. Banner. 
McGee comes face to face with Banner in the third season episode, Broken Image. In this episode, Banner has a crooked doppelganger named Mike Cassidy. When McGee thinks he's finally found Banner, David thinks quickly and pretends to be Cassidy, which is supported by one of Cassidy's crooked associates. All right. You listen to me, friend. I don't know what you're up to, but do you ever show your face around here again? My friends are going to break both your legs. There's an interesting scene right before McGee opens the door that bridges the gap between the Six Million Dollar Man and the Incredible Hulk. Is it true what they said about the uh, Six Million Dollar Man? Well, if we predated it, it's true. Now, Jack Calvin appeared on four episodes of the Six Million Dollar Man, and of course the man who brought the Hulk to television, Kenneth Johnson, also worked on the Six Million Dollar Man. In Season 3's Proof Positive, Jack Calvin's McGee has the whole episode to himself, as this is the only episode where Bill Bixby wasn't available to do any new filming. We only see Banner in flashbacks and from a distance through the use of a stand-in, which actually kind of works in favor of this episode's angle being from McGee's point of view. The episode starts with a nightmare sequence, just like the one Banner has in the second season episode, Married, only in this instance, it's McGee being chased by the Hulk and not Banner. This is one of my favorite episodes back when I was a kid. I guess it was partly due to the fact that through the flashbacks, we got to see a lot more Hulk in the episode than usual. In this episode, Jack is taken off the Hulk story by his new boss, which he doesn't take lying down. The episode takes us through flashbacks and previous Hulk encounters. I can't possibly describe what it was like seeing that, that terrible creature. As we get to see how the Hulk has impacted Jack McGee's life so far. It's revealed that McGee is so obsessed with the creature, he sometimes hallucinates that the Hulk is present in a room when he's not. The end of the episode has a Hulk out with a banner standing. Transformation happens in front of Jack's boss, proving to her the Hulk does exist. In the season three episode, Equinox, McGee once again comes very close to discovering that David Banner is still alive. Jack manages to corner Banner twice, once in a library and a second time in a large closet during a masquerade party, a party that McGee has gone to great lengths to crash. The first time triggers a short Hulk out scene where McGee tries to tranquilize the Hulk. The Hulk actually manages to mingle in the crowded party and nobody suspects he's a real monster. The Hulk heads for a closet and we don't even see him transform back to Banner when the second time that McGee corners Banner occurs. We get a scene that puts the spotlight on McGee's motivations when Banner asks McGee, why won't you leave me alone? To which he replies, from the beginning, nobody's believed me. You're my vindication. Banner manages to push down a rack of clothes on McGee and escape. It should be noted that McGee is still referring to David as John Doe. You're my vindication. And you'll be destroying me. I will be stopping an uncontrollable and dangerous force. Isn't it fascinating how Jack McGee gives excuses to vindicate himself? Excuses that it, I would bet that even he himself doesn't believe? This show is such a great study of human nature. McGee's last appearance was on the Hulk TV movie from 1988, The Incredible Hulk Returns. In the movie, he has a confrontation with Thor that doesn't go very well for him. I'm uh, looking for a man who I... You have found one. Uh, uh, yeah, but... And towards the end, he gets told by his boss that he doesn't want any more Hulk stories. Of course, McGee is defiant and swears to get to the bottom of the Hulk-Thor connection. Whatever happened to McGee after that will probably just be a mystery. The name Jack McGee would pop up in the 2008 Hulk movie, but this time it was that of a college student being interviewed about a Hulk rampage. In the Immortal Hulk comic book series, a new McGee was created, but this time it was a female named Jackie McGee. I bet the reason we never had the Jack McGee in comics from the television show has something to do with the rights. In real life, the actor that played Jack McGee was Jack Colvin, who unfortunately passed away in 2005 of a stroke at the age of 71. The last thing IMDb has him down for was a 27-minute short entitled Birds of a Feather in 1998. So what do you think about Jack McGee as a character? Post your thoughts in the comments below. 
Oh, hey, I just did a humorous video on my recent vacation to Florida. Check it out. It's called, I Barely Survived on the Road to My Florida Vacation. It's kind of also a, a tribute to Chips and the old black and white cop show, The Highway Patrol. Please subscribe and hit the bell for future notifications. Thanks and have a great day.